Welcome back to Score Society TV. Uh, we have another special guest, a uh, friend of mine. He's a, also another former teammate. He played on my AU team, Positive Image. Um, but he was a year younger than me um, yes, and sir. a guy who worked really hard uh, and made his way to the Division One basketball. My, my buddy, my friend, uh, Zaire Carrington. <laughs> How you doing, buddy? Yeah. I'm good, Shug. What's good, bro? Man, nothing, brother. Appreciate you having me on, man. Thank you for taking the time. I don't know you are a busy man these days, so uh, <laughs> that is greatly appreciated. Um, nice, so man. we want to talk. Fun. So you you have a very unique story to me, um, and I think youth athletes as well as uh, high school to college athletes, it would, be, it would be inspiring for them. Um, the reason why I say that is because you is a guy who – like I said, you were younger than me, and I watched you, you know, start. I feel like I, I watched you start playing basketball, and yeah, um, be transparent. I didn't think like, yeah, oh, he's pretty good. He's, <laughs> he's tall. Now, I guess. You tell the truth, though. I wasn't. No, nice I, like that. That, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. I did. I didn't see it. Um, but you know, I, after I, you know, I went to college for maybe a year or two, and came back, and Zaire Karen's is a Division One player. He's a Division One athlete. Um, tell, tell me about the work ethic you had to put in from the time I saw you and then the time I kind of went, you know, just went to college and, you know, also your division one player, what kind what type, what was your routine, your regimen and how often did you work out? Give us something. You want to talk about the work? Like, I think first of all, I started like just something inside of me that I saw inside of other dudes and then like watching the dudes that were older than me. So I remember me and Will, like, we used to walk, you know, we probably lived, like, a 25-minute walk from the rec center. We'd be walking up, you know. i get him off of uh, Sharp Neck or whatever. we go up also, and then we in the gym in the morning. Then we coach basketball and was in the gym in the afternoon. So, um, and I just knew I wasn't as good as everybody else either. So mm. I knew that's where the, the work was going to have to come from if I wanted to make something out of it. And I just wanted to play in college. Like, I didn't care, like, D1, D2, D3. I didn't really focus on that so much other than just, like, let me just try to get myself a scholarship. And luckily, man, Lehigh came around. They was looking at me. Um, and it was good. And uh, another thing, too, I was going to say is, like, I didn't want to waste what God gave me. Like, I knew, like, not that it was going to be easier for me, but, like, I was, like, six 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 seven. Like, mm -hmm. that, you know what I mean? That's a gift when you when you're young because people take more of a chance on you you know what i mean and yeah, i was yeah. athletic and all that stuff but people were like you know what i mean so i saw other cats like you know i mean five ten five eleven five eight guards like that was nice like yeah. dudes you probably never really heard but you know like little kev stokes you know what i mean yeah, he was like five good. seven shout out, shout shoot, out you know what i mean mm -hmm. so, good question for you yeah. um because because you started work when you was working out right um it, it's at least for me that's how i went I was working out a lot, but I wasn't really seeing um, too much progress on in the game, right? Like, I'm still, yeah. you know, you're working out and you're battling to get into that starting five, you're battling to get the minutes, or you're battling just to, you know, whatever. You, you, might, you might have hit 10 shots in a row in your workout one day, and then the next day in the game, you're not hitting nothing. What, yeah. At what point in your, your journey of working out did you turn that corner? Because, like, we, we both said, like, you wasn't good at first. And like, did it was it all right? My ninth grade year, I was working really hard. Did I didn't see improvement to my junior year? Like, how how long did you it take to get that uh, see yourself turn that corner? I think it was uh, it was it was incremental progress. Like, it wasn't all overnight. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it was like you know what I mean. At one point, I couldn't do this, but I could do that. Like, I, you know, I wasn't I, I couldn't make a left hand layup at all at one point. Then it's like, all right, cool. I know I can go you know what I mean, counter and, and get that that layup to go where I got a little, like, jump hook or whatever. And, like, to be yeah, honest, that, too, that was your move, too, that jump hook. Yeah. Was your move. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they did. You know what I mean? They told us, like, simple stuff, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, some of it, too, just being coachable. Like, listen, like, you know what I mean? All right, I, I got some of the pieces. I could jump. I'm tall. I'm pretty fast. Like, put that together with a little bit of something, and, you know what I mean? And you work hard, and you be able yeah. to be good. But – um, but no, I started, I was seeing progress like every year, honestly. And I, I started playing late. I didn't start playing organized basketball until eighth grade, like really till I started coming up there yeah, me and you um, to Finley. Uh -huh. So like, I always felt like I was kind of behind. So I wasn't really even worried about like 
in my, I was just still trying to catch up to other, you know, because it was always somebody with a bigger name than us in, in, in Philly. We was coming up at that time. It was right. you know, Singletary and Kyle Lowry and, mm-hmm. you know, all the dudes that went to Nova, Bilal and all those cats. So, you know, I was just trying to play catch up. But I, I was able to, you know, every year I was adding a little something to my game. I was able to do something more. And I had an opportunity when my high school team wasn't, so competitive or so good. So I got the opportunity to, to make mistakes in high school. Right. Whereas I know some other dudes y'all was playing at, you know, schools that was competing for, for championships mm-hmm. or, you know what I mean? And like, so the stakes is a lot higher. They couldn't, you know what I mean? Take chances with a young dude. Whereas me, like I got some minutes, a little bit younger. I was able to work through some stuff. We weren't so good my sophomore year. So when I made a little bit of that jump, I was able to play it out. You know what I mean? Like make mistakes on the court not have to worry about getting subbed out and stuff like that. You know what I mean? When did you know you was a Division One player? When did you, did you feel like you was always a Division One player or did it was it a thing like, yo, man, I just dropped 40 on on this school, bro. I'm, I'm <laughs> legit. I, yeah, I thought I was – um, I, I, I thought I could play D1. I also just like – I wanted to go somewhere where like I had an opportunity to get on the court. Like mm-hmm. I got recruited higher than Lehigh. I remember like – Villanova was probably one of the best schools that recruit me and stuff, but it was no, and I wasn't looking for a guarantee of playing time or anything like that, but you know, we from Philly. So you could kind of like, you could sift through bullshit. And like a lot of, a lot of college coaches, like they didn't lie to me, but they wasn't making me and they didn't make me feel confident that like I could go in there and really have a shot. And I was like, bro, I know if I go somewhere and I'm not able to play, it's not going to be a fun experience. I don't want right. to drop out. I don't, you know what I mean? So you know, I was kind of surprised. I was like not surprised at some like some of the schools, but when Lee I like came to me and they were just like, Yeah, like you had an opportunity to if you put the work in, what they said was simple, like if you work hard, you put the work in, you'll have an opportunity to play. And that's all I was really looking for. Right. Um but yeah, I mean, I knew I, I could I knew I was a D one player. I didn't I didn't know what it was gonna be like though. I didn't know I would have a career that I would have and be like, you know, a starter, somebody that's contributing, winning MVPs and stuff like that. Right. Until later. But what I did realize, though, is that a lot of people didn't know how to work hard. Mm. When I got to college, it was like, like, we was working a lot harder in high school. You know what I mean? Just kind of how, like yeah, how t- we came up. So. T- tell me tell me more about that, because I think, um, you know, as a as a coach now, um, I think parents as well as players underestimate how much work is done at yeah. the next level. You know what I mean? So. I mean, because you was like, like you said, you was a guy who was already working out in the morning. You was already working out with a, you know, an afternoon after practice. And that was on your own. And now you're saying when I went to college, it was more work than that. So tell me about the transition from the high school work ethic to the college work ethic. Yeah, I feel like, you know, like I said, like when I started, like it was something and me, they wanted to change my situation. I wanted to prove something. I wanted to prove that I could go D1. I wanted to prove that I could get a scholarship. I wanted to prove that I was, you know, just as good as whoever had the top name in school. So, like, that pushed me to work hard. Like, I was in the gym. But then, like, you get to college, you realize you got to work hard and smart, Hmm. which is even harder to do. You know what I mean? It's like, I'm not just in the gym shooting around, getting like, nah, I'm in here running drills. I'm in here, you know what I mean, conditioning myself with no ball, you know what I mean? Or like mm-hmm. I'm going through ball handling drill stuff that I don't like to do, um, you know, or working on weaknesses every day, nonstop, you know what I mean? That don't always feel good. So, uh, but I was kind of used to that already. Like I said, like I, I felt like I was always, you know, trying to catch up to other people or, you know what I mean? So I was, right. I was okay with like, with like the process and stuff. And what quickly happened was I was starting to get minutes in return, even though I was a freshman, you know what I mean? My mm-hmm. coach was rewarding me. He was like, yo, you work hard. I know I can go in there and count on you to get one or two old boards or, you know, and that's the other thing too, the way we got coached was, and you was like this too, like we, we knew we had to find whatever opportunity we could get. So doing the shit that other people didn't want to do is lose balls or if it's guarding right. the other team, best player, being yep. willing to, to, to be in a fight or start a fight, you know what I mean? Uh-huh. Like, you, <laughs> like, we was cool with that, and, and that ain't scared. So, Absolutely. you know, I feel like coach, my coach saw that part in me too and was like, you know, and started rewarding that. But, yeah, man. So, did you uh, – so, talk about your – your um, give me a down moment in college because I want, I want to speak more to the college players right now. 
Um, and, you know, you may, and this moment can look like um, the scenario can be, hey, you thought you was going to get more minutes one year and then, or you probably had to share mm -hmm. your minutes, or maybe you went, hit a wall. Maybe you just, you know, was went through a, uh, a spurt where you wasn't doing your, well, you wasn't producing your best. You wasn't getting the most points. You wasn't getting the most rebounds. How'd you overcome yeah. it? There was a lot of down moments in college. Uh, just because the season's is long, mm -hmm. you know, like it's a lot of stuff that be going on outside of basketball and stuff sometimes too. But I, I remember a couple. I mean, I, there's a couple that jumped to mind. The first was I remember freshman year for our first game. Like I'm playing well in practice. I'm doing my thing. I'm like, you know, I, I got a couple like little reps with the starters and stuff. So I didn't, I didn't think I was starting, but I knew I, I thought I was gonna play. Mm -hmm. But like. Right before the game, for the practice for the game, the coach asked me something from the scout, and I didn't and I didn't know or I hesitated or something like that. I wasn't paying attention when he asked me, and I remember he like he like moved on quickly and like whatever. Mm -hmm. And then first game of my career, we played out of Oregon. I ain't I ain't touched the floor at all. I ain't touched mm -hmm. the floor. At all. So That's the only game of my career. Paying yeah. attention to the coach, but not paying pay attention. attention. Not paying attention. Yeah. It cost you, huh? <laughs> yeah, it cost me. So that yeah. was like that was a low moment too, because like you know you excited like. You know, I'm getting ready. I'm like, am I going to play? Am I not? Then I'm like, damn, is he going to just play with me like this the whole season, my whole career? So that was a low moment. Um, but it also taught me a lesson, too. It's like, yo, pay attention. You got to be locked right. in at all times. Right. Um, my senior year, uh, I, I would say every year after that, too, like we lost to the – this is kind of an ongoing low moment for most of my career, but we lost to the same team in the quarterfinals of our conference tournament every year. What team? Except for my senior year, Army. Army, okay. We lost the Army my freshman year at home. They scored a basket after the buzzer, but, you know, this was a long time ago. Was TV, the game wasn't on TV, so even though they could go back and watch the video and see that it was after the buzzer, because it wasn't televised, they called the game, and we lost. Mm. So we lost to them like that. We lost to them at their place. We lost to them at home another time, in overtime. And then we played them again my senior year, and we beat them in the quarterfinals. But, you know what I mean? Like, that just hanging over. That was, like, kind of a low moment. was like, damn, like, am I a loser? Like, every year we can't even get out of the quarterfinal. You know what I mean? As good yeah. as I think I am, but we have, you know, a good regular season or if I'm having a good, you know, individual season. So that was a, a low moment for sure. Um, and then getting hurt my senior year. Like, a couple of games into my senior year, I sprained my MCL. And that was uh, the first time I whole career I missed any games or was having any injuries that was going to mm. keep me out of games. And then it was just also like that unknown. Like, I'm at the end of my career. Um, what am I going to do next year? You know what I mean? Like, you're starting to get to that point where, like, am I, I want to go play pro, but, you know, and then you know how everybody's been telling you all your life, you got to have a backup plan. You got a backup plan. Right, right. I'm like, shit, I ain't got no backup plan. Uh, <laughs> so, But then so I, you, got, I got one, but – yeah. So, so you get when you went from um, Lehigh and you it was still basketball after that. Um, I don't know. Did you go? Did you play overseas? Or no, nah, I went and played in. The, so it's it's this this kind of like a segue into the, the next part. Was like I got hurt my senior year, and I didn't know. Like I ended up coming back and stuff, but I was just I was kind of nervous. I was like, Yo, let me just apply to grad school, so I got mm -hmm. something possibly in the works. You know what I mean? I was like, I might. You know, I'm in, I'm interested. I might. I want to be a professor or something. Who knows? Right. So during that time, it was like December of my senior year, I applied for grad school and I was able to get in. And uh, I had options to go play overseas, but the money wasn't great. Um, I had the option to like kind of go to uh, grad school on a scholarship. I stayed at Lehigh, I go to grad school on a scholarship. And I, during that time, I played in the ABA too. People don't okay. know the ABA is still around. So I was playing pro for a team out of Jersey City in the ABA. I did that for like a year and a half uh -huh. right after school. Um but yeah, never went to the overseas. But you, like, but you're still, you're still playing basketball right now, right? Yep. Tell tell us tell us about what you're doing, um, and you know, tell us how you how you feeling now. Tell us, you know, a little bit about what you, you know, how how much your game advanced since um, all the seasons <laughs> you've been through. Yeah, man, uh, I'm still playing now. I got my my Princeton three x three. I mean, okay. um, yeah, man. So I started playing professional three x three three on three basketball like uh seven years ago um mm -hmm. in 2017 became an olympic sport uh like right the same year when i started playing and um like the sport has been growing and it's it's set up similar to like tennis or golf like where pro tennis pro golf or like 
we have weekend long tournaments. Like it's tournaments every weekend, just about um, through the whole summer and through the fall. But they all over the world. So we'll play like, you know, three or four tournaments a month. Mm-hmm. But like one will be in France. Another one will be in Puerto Rico. Another one will be in Canada. Um, and then at the end of the season, you know, they kind of we're earning points all the way, you know, similar to like NBA or something like that. where you, you know, you got your record and stuff like that. And then at the right. end of the season, that's one final tournament for the top team. So I've been doing that for the last seven years. Also, we play for prize money every time we play. So. You know, it's, it's professional basketball. Um, you know, we got sponsors and somebody that backs our team and everything like that that takes care of all our travel. Um, and so, yeah, it's been like a second, like, almost like a second win or a second career, bro. I didn't expect this at all. Like, I got into it just hooping with some of my homies that were involved with it. Yeah, I'm glad you said that because I think um, people, some people, you know, when they when they realize or when they may feel that they're not going to make it to the Europe, the leagues, and or NBA, they you know they they morale goes down. They don't want to play yeah. as much. Um, but there's other alternatives out there, and you still are prof- considered a professional athlete because you're getting paid to play yeah. basketball. So that's a amazing feeling. Um, super proud of all the things you've done. Uh, so we got a game. We call we do. Uh, it's called Who You Got, and we compare some players. Mm. Uh, we think about okay, and it's in their prom. Keep in mind, it's in their prom. as you know, um, their scores, um, or they may did right. things really good. All right. Uh, so the first one is Stefan Marbury or Steve Francis. Okay. Any prime. Any prime. Mm-hmm. Prime Steph, prime Steve. Dang, that's tough. That's super tough. Um I feel like I gotta go. I gotta go Steph. Steph, yeah, Steph. I don't I think know. Steph, Steph, more Steph work. Yeah, Steph, Steph used to go. If you forget about Steph, uh in Minnesota days, before he even got to Phoenix, then he had a nice run with New York, and like, and then was still killing overseas for a long time. And Steve was Steve was nice too. Steve was crazy. I feel like it was like fewer years. Though. I feel like Steph did it over a longer stretch, but mm-hmm. I could be wrong. I don't know. Steve had that crazy run at Maryland too. So I, it's, that's a that's a tough. Big I don't know. East Coast bias though, man. I I give I give the stuff. All right, so we go. So. Uh... Kevin Durant or Carmelo Anthony? Oh, that's tough. That's tough. That's they, tough. Yeah, they, they you both smooth get, scores, bro. They both smooth scores. Yeah, super smooth. You, I feel like I, I hate to go. I hate to bring rings into it, but like if you're going off of just package, yeah, I'm, I'm going off package. I'm not. I'm not going off a of team. Nothing. Yeah. I'm going off package. If you going off just tagging, you might have to give it to Melo. You might have to give it to Melo just because I feel like he did more, a little more post work. But everything else is, you know what I mean? It's, yeah, I don't know. That's a tough one. I'm, I'm, I'm going to go Melo. I'm going to go. All right. Uh, <laughs> how about let's go De'Aaron Fox or Donovan Mitchell? Fox. Give me Fox. Really? Donovan yeah, Mitchell, Donovan Mitchell been putting in work for longer though. He's been pretty consistent. He a problem. He a problem. I I like how uh uh no disrespect Donovan Mitchell. I, I I know him a little bit. I've hooped him against him a couple of times and stuff. But uh he's tough for sure. I feel like he need more shots. I feel like Fox be a little more efficient. I feel like Fox do a little bit more like leadership stuff. Like I you know what I mean. Package maybe yeah. maybe uh. You know, Mitchell got him a little bit, but I, I, I like how Fox be going at people. He he looked like he trying to win too. Yeah, absolutely. I like him too. I'm gonna go with um Fox or Donovan. I'm gonna go with Donovan though. I like Donovan. Go with Donovan. Donovan. Yeah, I'm gonna go with Donovan. Remember when people was comparing De'Aaron Fox and Lonzo Ball? Not to say Lonzo, you know, Lonzo's obviously tough, but like coming in that draft, he was like, oh, like Lonzo this that, and then yeah, he got Lonzo got a girlfriend, man. He he's chilling now. <laughs> uh we're gonna go so let us last one. Um Jalen Brown or Anthony Edwards. Jalen definitely been doing it for longer. He's been doing Jaylen, it for longer, uh, but Anthony Edwards having a great season. And- Ain't coming, I'm, bro. Like I'm, if, listen, it might be. Uh... I'm gonna help you out. I'm gonna listen. I'm just to let you know. Anthony Edwards averaged 25 points right now, 
And Jalen Brown yeah, averaged yeah, 23. Now you have 23. Yeah, I see that. Anthony Edwards is number 17th in the league, and Jalen Brown is 25th in scoring. That part don't even surprise me. They got different situations though. Like true, they got you like you true. got Tatum over there. You got hot, like not the Drew playing like that. Ant Ant can kind of do what he wants. Ant that's Ant team now. Carl yeah. stand in the corner, shoot your catch a few threes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Rudy move. Ant it's the Ant show. I feel like after this season it might even be even more. But like yo, I, I still just it'd be hard for me to separate winning from people too. Like and not say you know they haven't won, but just get into the finals. So I thought those dudes. Even though they got a good young team, like them being able to get to the finals and they'll be back again. Uh, talking about the Celtics, uh-huh. I'm gonna give it to I'm gonna give it to JB for right now. Uh, I agree with that. I, I always I'm all, I always go with yeah. uh, the time. That's or, tough though. Yeah, I go. I always go with how long they've been doing it um, at the, the at an efficient level. Um, yeah. Or or the only way I would go, um, a guy who's younger who's been doing less is he's doing a lot more. Than the person did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, like you said, Anthony Edwards and Jalen Brown, they got two different situations. Uh, both great players. Uh, but, Brad, listen, bro, I appreciate you coming on. Um, All day. You, man. Uh, enjoy the rest of your Sunday. Uh, we got to do this. We got to do this again, man. Like absolutely. I said, a little bit longer. I, I want to, uh, I feel like it's, it's a lot of good stories in this. In this yeah. Uh, once, once people get to know two. the brand, once people get to know the brand, I'll circle back. <laughs> And you know, yeah, do, yeah, yeah. do more interviews and stuff like that. I do longer interviews right now. I just want to keep people attention span. You know, I want this to, I want the kids to watch it. And you know, the kids, the kids is raised on this this, this computer, this TV. It's, they got short yeah. attention spans right now. So, um, you know, we, we break them off a little bit, and then once they say, "Hey, we, we yeah. want more," and then we go. I'm trying. I'm trying to come do it in LA too. I want. I want, I want to do a lot. One time, uh, so. Oh, absolutely. See, see what bro. you're doing out there. Listen, you always know. You know my number, bro. Anytime you come out here, let me know. And definitely get together and make it happen. But that's another show for Score on Score Society TV. Make sure y'all like, subscribe, share, comment. And until next time.